A metal sphere of radius A is inside and concentric with a hollow sphere of radius B. Show that the capacitance of the spherical capacitor is equal to 4 pi times the permittivity of free space times the ratio of the product of the radii, AB, and the difference in the radii, B minus A. Does the capacitance depend on the charge or on the geometry of the capacitor? Let's begin with a sketch. We have a spherical capacitor formed from two concentric spheres of radii A and B. Now remember, a capacitor is formed from solid conducting plates, where the charge on each plate is equal in magnitude but opposite in sign. So let's say this inner sphere of radius A has a total charge Q on it. And let's say this outer sphere of radius B has a total charge of minus Q on it. To find the capacitance, let's start with the definition of capacitance. Capacitance is defined as the ratio of the magnitude of charge, or the charge on the positive plate, over the magnitude of the potential difference between the two plates. Now here we do not know the potential difference, nor do we know the charge. Even though I labeled it in the picture, we don't know how much charge we have. We don't know the potential difference. But we do know one thing. From what we've learned previously, we do know something about the electric field of this configuration. The electric field for these spheres will be spherically symmetric. Now this inner sphere has a electric field radiating everywhere out in space around it, going from the positive charge on the positive surface, ending with the negative charge on the negative surface. Electric field is spherically symmetric. Now, why is this important? This is important because we do know a connection between electric potential and the electric field. We know that the potential difference between two points in an electric field is equal to the negative of the line integral between those two points. Here we're going from the inner sphere of radius A to the outer sphere of radius B. So let's do this. Even though we don't know the charge and even though we don't know the potential difference, let's just start off by coming up with an expression for the potential difference. Now we do know what the electric field is due to a sphere of charge. We showed, we've shown earlier that the electric field due to a sphere of charge is equal to kq over r squared, where r is the distance from the center of the sphere to the point we're interested in. Well, in this problem, we're only evaluating the electric field between the two spheres. So I'll just call this point point A, because that's at radius A. This point is point B, because it's at radius B. And our electric field is between points A and B. So let's create the line that we're going to eventually integrate from. Let's take a straight line along the radius going from point A to point B. So here is the line of integration. So this means that our electric field is parallel to that line of integration. So let's indicate the unit vector indicating the direction of our integration path, r hat, for being along the radial line. 
So that means the electric field as a vector is equal to kq over r squared r hat. Now you're wondering, well, what about the electric field due to the outer sphere, Mel? Well, we know previously that the electric field due to the outer sphere is going to be zero inside that cavity. So we only have to worry about the electric field due to the inner sphere. So now that we have an expression for the electric field, let's use it to find the potential difference. The potential difference is minus the line integral from a to b. So we're going to start with r equals a. We're going to end with r equals b and the dot product between the electric field and the displacement differential. So that is going to be k q over r squared for the electric field r hat dotted with dr r hat for the displacement differential of the path we are integrating on, where I am just using the displacement differential. I'm using dr r hat to be the displacement differential for our integration path. What this means is the change of potential is equal to minus from a to b k q over r squared dr times the dot product between our r hat unit vector and itself. Now remember, a unit vector has a magnitude of 1, and the dot product of a vector with itself is the magnitude of that vector squared. So the dot product between r hat and itself is 1 squared, which is just 1. This means that our potential difference is equal to minus the integral from a to b, k q over r squared dr. And when we integrate this, we get minus a minus k q over r evaluated from a to b. So that minus times a minus becomes a positive, and we get that the potential difference between the two points is equal to k q 1 over b minus 1 over a. So we now have the potential difference is equal to k q, and let's get a common denominator, a minus b over a b. So here is the potential difference between the two points. Now remember, capacitance is defined to be charge over the magnitude of the potential difference. So this is just the charge over the magnitude of our potential difference, which is just k q a minus b over a b. Because I don't want to keep writing the absolute value over and over again, I am going to recognize that a minus b is a negative number. So I'm just going to rewrite that as b minus a. And that'll allow me to take, it, take out the absolute value because b minus a is a positive value since b, the larger radius, is greater than a, the smaller radius. And now that I have this, notice that the charge that we didn't know how much we had ends up canceling. So this gives us a b when we invert and multiply that denominator, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, that's just our Coulomb constant, times b minus a. 
This gives us a final result of the capacitance for a spherical capacitor being equal to 4 pi epsilon naught times the product AB divided by the difference in the radii of the spheres, B minus A. Notice something about this derivation. The amount of charge on our capacitor does not appear. The potential difference that we might place on our capacitor does not appear. The ability of this capacitor to store charge is independent of the amount of charge on the capacitor, and it's independent of how much potential difference we could put across the capacitor. It depends only on the geometry of the capacitor. Notice that geometry of the geometry of this capacitor depends on the distance between the inner and the outer plates. Notice that the geometry of the spherical capacitor depends only on the radii of the concentric spheres. Depending on how big the difference is between the radii of the concentric spheres will influence the, ca the capacitance. The greater the distance of separation between our plates, the smaller the capacitance. The smaller the distance of separation between our plates, the larger the capacitance. This reinforces the fact that capacitance depends only on the, the geometry of the capacitor, not on the charge or potential difference across the capacitor.